Hey everybody, welcome back to No Jumper News. It's Adam22 here with your man AD. Let's get right into these stories. So first things first, the baby's performance in Miami from this last weekend is still causing a ton of controversy. For one, he brought out Tory Lanez in what appeared to be some sort of snub towards Meg Thee Stallion, and a lot of people are saying that it might have violated his restraining order that Meg Thee Stallion has on him. But the thing still making the most noise is the fact that during his performance, the baby made some strangely insensitive comments spreading misinformation about HIV and AIDS while targeting the LGBTQ community. Just in case you forgot, his quote was, if you didn't show up today with HIV, HIV, AIDS, or any of them deadly sexually transmitted diseases that'll make you die in two to three weeks, then put your cell phone lighter up. Ladies, if your pussy smells like water, put your cell phone light in the air. Fellas, if you ain't sucking dick in the parking lot, put your cell phone lighter up. Though he did issue an apology about the controversial comments, it seems like the backlash is just gonna continue. Less than two months after his clothing line with Boohoo Man was announced, the fashion retailer has revealed on social media that they have canceled the collection and will no longer be working with the baby. Even Elton John joined the chat and expressed that he was shocked to hear about the comments. Additionally, Dua Lipa stated that she was horrified to watch the baby's rant, distancing herself from him after they already had a huge collab a couple of months back. And on top of that, she's also removed their collaboration from her Apple Music playlist. Demi Lovato also issued a statement sharing information about HIV and AIDS, and she has dragged the baby in on her caption. The entire situation has seemingly provoked the family of Jalen Craig, the man who the baby shot and killed, to speak out against the Charlotte rapper, accusing him of faking the robbery. Back in 2018, the baby was involved in an altercation outside of North Carolina Walmart, and he ended up killing a 19-year-old named Jalen Craig. On Twitter, in a series of now-deleted posts, a woman claiming to be the cousin of Jalen detailed what allegedly transpired, calling the baby a killer and a menace. On November 5th, 2018, 19-year-old Jalen Craig had just gotten off work. Jalen and his friend Henry, known to his family and friends as Spanky, went to the Walmart store after work that day to buy long johns. As they made their way to the men's undergarments section, Jalen and Spanky damn near lost their shit when they got a glimpse of who they thought was up and coming local rapper the baby he hadn't blown up at that point but both of the young men were fans of his music and had been following him on social media for some time can you imagine the excitement that they felt they were excited and as they navigated the aisle of the store to buy their wares he crossed paths with them again but this time in spite of their genuine innocent and pure excitement to see him up close kirk became agitated after spewing a few words he assaulted henry with a punch to the face a scuffle ensued jalen attempted to defuse the situation and break up the fight kirk's girlfriend punched jalen in the face and while they were still entangled with Spanky, Kirk fired a shot from his illegal and unregistered gun as Jalen turned to run. Ballistics and physical evidence show that Jalen was shot in the backslash side of his torso while he was trying to flee. One of the detectives who worked the case told the family that this incident was never being investigated as a robbery gone bad. Yet the lie that's been told recirculated and referenced in rap songs and adopted as the truth by the masses is that my little cousin was the thug who tried it and got what he deserved. No, no, it's quite the opposite. Not not only did the baby kill Jalen, he's perpetuated a lie that continues to assassinate Jalen's character and tarnish his good name, while my family and I have had enough. Meanwhile, the baby dropped a music video for his single, Giving What It's Supposed to Give. He included a message in a rainbow colored font at the end of the visual that read, Don't fight hate with hate. My apologies for being me the same way that you want the freedom to be you. So yeah. This the baby situation sure seems like it's uh, blowing up beyond what we might have uh, assumed was going to happen. Uh, overall, I feel like the baby just kind of got real comfortable with just being himself. And it turns out that that might not be the best idea in this world where you can get canceled for having an opinion that's like sort of controversial. So uh, I don't know. I wonder if he feels like he shouldn't have said that stuff or I wonder if he feels like, you know what, it was worth it to just have the perspective that he actually has. When I first heard of this, I didn't really see what was so wrong about it and stuff like that and then you know after looking and seeing how people felt about it i was like well damn you know i can see where they're coming from with that but i still don't think that he was trying like targeting gay people when he was saying that shit. you know what i'm saying yes it's insensitive but i don't think that he had like malice in his heart to sit there and diss people and shit. but what i do like is that no matter what's going on like me i would have shut the fuck up at this point He's standing on his shit, and I mean, I respect that shit 100. I mean, he did apologize, but his apology that, that he issued that people were, like, completely not happy with was basically, like, I'm just being myself. The same way that y'all are trying to be yourself, 
But he's like comparing him sort of tearing gay people down, at least from their perspective, to the actual act of being gay, which you know they're not going to appreciate that. And it's pretty wild seeing like we, we didn't even dra drag up any of these quotes, but seeing like T.I. and Boosie, they're sort of getting like canceled by proxy just because they're associated with it and, and sort of defending the baby at this time. So. I don't know. I just sort of wonder how far this is going to go because it's like, yeah, Dua Lipa taking you uh, off of her playlist is one thing. Elton John, that's another thing. These are people that have like almost no connection to rap music. I feel like in rap music, probably like very few people are going to care. But at the same time, the baby's career has been kind of like helped out a lot by doing so many of these mainstream gigs whether it was doing all this stuff with Meg Thee Stallion or, or doing this stuff with Dua Lipa etc it sort of remains to be seen how much a lot of that uh has really mattered for his career but I know for me I would much rather hear the baby make some street records regardless so maybe this might actually be making more beloved in a way yeah, I, I was uh, didn't think it was that big until I seen that nigga Elton John write something. I was like, oh, they didn't pissed off the Rocket Man because this shit didn't would turn to a whole little another situation and shit. And I want to know too, who is who like who made up this shit about Tory Lanez breaking his like is that speculation or did a police officer or DA say something about that shit? Because that nigga lives in Miami, like. It's not too far fetched that the nigga can. He's a performer as well too. Like, who the fuck made that up to where they'll sit there and say that he might be breaking his shit? Like, I mean, we don't know for sure that he's being investigated for breaking the restraining order, and you have to assume that his team probably thought of that before they went and played the same concert as Meg Thee Stallion. We haven't got confirmation that he's being investigated about that or anything, so uh, we probably shouldn't jump to conclusions. But, I was but like, where did that come from to where everybody is speculating? I think that people just saw him performing at roughly the same time that she was and they're like oh they were presumably near each other i don't know how far away you're supposed to stay because of the restraining order it seems to me like he probably did break the restraining order it just sort of remains to see if it was significant enough that they're going to actually like try to throw him in jail or some so shit when over they're it. in the same type of business in a place where he lives at i don't get it that shit weird i just don't know where that shit came from yeah but elton john sheesh rocket man it's also very interesting to see how once, you know, one person comes for you, once a couple of people pile on, then you start getting hit by all sides. So now we have the family of the dude who got killed in that conversation at the Walmart, basically issuing a completely different version of events. I don't know who to believe. It does seem like pretty unlikely to me that the baby would have uh, pulled out and shot somebody unless he was extremely threatened in that moment but uh she is providing a lot of details that whether they're true or not that may or may not change how people view that situation because the baby basically was the only one putting the story out for a long time i never really saw any like investigative reporting or like you know journalists going and trying to talk to the family or whatever so now we're getting to hear the other side of things i'm not sure how much that's really going to matter i'm pretty sure if it's in walmart is caught on video and the police did their investigation and seen what he said they wouldn't let him go if that was the case if it wasn't like that and then two we need to stop doing this in the communities uh making it seem like everybody ain't no fucking angel and i don't even know the young man i don't know i don't know who the fuck he is but I, I have family members and I know people that, yes, they had some badass motherfuckers, bro. They get killed and they get hit the news like they were a saint, they were this and that. Nah, nigga, they don't be that cut and dry and shit like that sometimes. So um, I feel like if the police seen this shit and they, and they said that it was what it is, the baby wasn't even like that popular then. You can't say no conspiracy thing for them to say that, oh, they did something that, you know, made it seem like that or it's conspiracy shit to right, me. Right, because if it's all captured on camera and you already know that the cops are probably trying to throw this guy in jail regardless, just because of the fact that he's a dude who shot somebody in the Walmart, it's really hard to imagine that they would have gone easy on him. Like whenever I heard like, oh, the baby got off on self-defense in this situation or whatever, I just gave it the benefit of the doubt because I know that they're trying to get his ass, right? So uh, yeah, I don't know. I don't think it's going back to court or nothing. So it don't really matter that much, but it is interesting to see that other narrative being put out there. If you pop somebody at Walmart, you're going down. I'm going to Kmart. Do they even have Kmart? There's a few left.
That motherfucker's gone, Costco. Next story. Fans have been calling Safari out throughout the entire season for his careless behavior on Love and Hip Hop Atlanta. In one of the more recent scenes, Safari and Erica Mena have a chat about their new baby on the way. Erica shared with Safari that they're having a boy when their baby girl, Sapphire, who was playing around, falls over on her back. While they both instantly jump up, Erica was not happy at all with Safari's reaction to their daughter's fall. She immediately grabbed the baby while Safari watched and laughed at her and tumbled, leading to an intense exchange between the parents. Erica later tells the camera, this moment is probably setting me up to get ready for what my life is about to be having to hold down my babies by myself even when they're hurting because daddy finds it funny she continues to say but it just proves how immature he is the video clip was not received well after being posted on social media safari has since faced a bit of backlash for critics saying that they felt he was inconsiderate while others seem to laugh as well as assuming children fall down all the time well it appears safari was not too happy of how the show edited the clip involving his daughter falling or any of his edits on the show in general he took to twitter to air out his grievances addressing the now viral video writing and y'all at loving hip-hop editors ain't shit we told y'all not to air my baby falling and y'all still used it had us reshoot a whole bunch of bullshit and y'all still use that y'all don't have no respect because that was not my response to me finding out i was having a boy that was tacky and tasteless it's definitely about to be a wrap of my time with y'all y'all be wanting too much of people time to be doing this type of whack shit we filmed an hour-long combo for that scene and y'all chop it to three minutes and use that to make it a focal point week erica mena recently gave birth to her son legend brian samuels last Last month the newborn came home a few days ago after spending time in the nicu youtube do us a favor like comment and subscribe and we'll be back real real soon appreciate y'all